Hey, how's everybody doing today? I hope everyone's having a great Sunday so far. Welcome back to another episode of Prehistoric Companions. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I do appreciate you stopping by and checking out what we're all about here. If you're interested in reptiles and art and shenanigans, then this is the channel for you, I promise you. So today, we're going to show you guys how you can retain more humidity in a glass tank. So, uh, my method has worked out pretty darn well for me. Danger Noodle here has been living in his new setup for some time. I've had Danger Noodle here for about 55 days now, and he's had two good sheds with me now. He just produced one today for me. So glass tanks are usually not very great for retaining humidity, especially for your species that require it. Um, so I'll show you guys what materials you need and we're going to convert this little 10 gallon here today for whenever I uh, get some more baby royals in my collection. They'll be all set up and ready to go. So let's get right to it, guys. What's up, world? What's going on, YouTube? My name's Dylan Schultz. I'm a mailman, a artist, and I'm a reptile keeper. If those things interest you, welcome to my channel and keep watching. Welcome back. We're in my reptile room. I'm gonna put this little noodle away. We got these snakes all chilling, hanging out in their bioactive tanks. So once this little noodle gets up to size, I'll throw him in one of these tanks. But for now, we got him situated here in this finished uh, 10 gallon glass tank that I've converted. So you'll see here, here we'll put you away. We'll let you go climb in there. So it opens up real nice. Watch him go back in there. right into the plant. So you want to take your time and let these guys slither off of you, you know, just let them do it on their terms, let them be comfortable. So he's almost back in there. So you'll need PVC sheeting and a screen mesh for the top. You'll need locks. You'll need a nice hinge. I, I like, I prefer these really long ones and gold because you know I'm fancy. <laughs> You'll need hot glue, non-toxic, um, and screws. So you really want these things to retain their humidity, especially with snakes, so you can get a nice, full, solid, nice shed, all right? So we're gonna get rid of that screen top and we're gonna get our PVC sheet, cut out a piece that fits this nice top, fits right on the inside here of this lip. And we'll get that sealed in, get the door cut out and get it all put together. So I have here a 24 by 48 inch sheet of black PVC sheeting. It's essentially foam sheeting. It's waterproof, lightweight, durable. I got this piece off of Amazon for $35. I haven't ever tried this one. I usually order mine from Lowe's Hardware and I kind of already like the aesthetic of the Lowe's brand better than this, but I uh, haven't tried this product out before. It actually has like a nice matte finish. So we'll try it out. I like how thick it is already. Like, it's just more durable. It comes in various thicknesses. This is quarter inch thick. I prefer that, especially for the doors. It makes the door a lot more durable and heavy duty. So you're also going to need a surface that you can cut on so you don't damage uh, whatever surface, like your countertops or whatever. So have something that's good to cut on. Uh, you want a straight edge and 
an X-Acto blade. This works fine. I wish I knew where I put my freaking utility blade. I don't know. I It happens. Being an artist and having so many materials and stuff, I don't know what the heck happens to my things. Okay, so in the measurements here, I got um, the width uh, 9 and 3 quarters and the length 19 and a half inches. So I'll cut out multiple pieces because I got multiple 10 gallon tanks so I'll have extra for future projects. See, it fits pretty good. I just gotta trim just a little tiny bit off of the edge, a couple millimeters. Just like that. I literally only took off a little tiny bit amount. So that fits great, nice and snug. So now we're gonna cut out a good sized door. <laughs> Probably a little unconventional, but <laughs> I like to find just like something that's already like a perfect square and then outline it with Sharpie. So we've got like a nice perfect size door. There we go, you can kind of see the lines there. Okay, we got our door cut out. We trimmed just a little tiny bit off the edges so the door will you know, open and close easier. So now the most important thing you're gonna need, I mean, the, the main thing is that this thing has to retain the humidity in there, but the animal, whatever you're keeping in there has gotta breathe too, so we need ventilation. All right, so we got two ventilation holes cut out and I saved the extra pieces of PVC. You'll see why here in a little bit. So we got our hot glue. I like the Gorilla Glue hot sticks. We need screen door mesh. You can find this at Walmart. Hinges. These screws are a little too long, so I got shorter screws. You'll see why. And our locks. Now we've cut out a piece of the screen door mesh and we have plenty of overlay material to hot glue down on the underside of this door. Okay, so really work the hot glue into the mesh and move it all around so it's nice and f the surface is nice and flush and looks good work the glue all into the mesh all right and there it is all nice and sturdy and strong in there hinges Now you'll see why we need those extra pieces because on the other side it's sharp so we're gonna need to cover those up and that way your snake or whatever you have in here doesn't get harmed so let's do that so using some extra pieces of PVC from cutting out these 
ventilation holes, you can uh, screw the excess uh, screw that was poking out there into this material, and now these edges aren't like near, like they're not very sharp. And you can probably, if you, they, if you think they are too sharp, you could probably use a tool to like, you know, press them down, make the corners a little softer, or maybe put like a little dab of hot glue on the corners, but much better than having screws or, you know, just get the appropriate size screws. I don't know if I could find screws short and thick enough that are only a quarter inch thick, but this works. So let's get the locks on and then we'll get the door installed on the tank. So in here is our door. So we got the locks, the hinges, the ventilation. Help if you unlock it. So we'll put a handle on there for easier access. So, and then underneath here, it's definitely important to get this door put together completely before you like attach it to the tank. Cause it'd be pretty hard to do all these steps with the door attached to the tank. So build the door first. There's no sharp edges underneath. Nothing sharp metal components poking through. So now I got these fancy handles. So I'll put a handle on there and we'll glue this thing in there and we'll be done. Okay, the last, last thing that we need to do is put, you see how it's doing that? So to fix that problem, we're just gonna take another piece of PVC and hot glue a little shelf there for the door to sit on. Easy to access. So yeah, this will retain all of the humidity, not all of it. <laughs> Won't be no 100% humidity, you got good ventilation in there, but it does what it needs to. And that's how you convert the glass tank, guys. That's how I do it anyways. So I hope this was of value to you. If uh, you guys just so happen to experiment and practice and uh, incorporate this into your uh, reptiling, uh, drop me a comment down below. And I'd love to see any pictures if you guys have any, so. And that's a wrap for today. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I did, I have fun. so much fun building this stuff. So until next time guys, be safe, wear your mask, be kind to each other, be kind to your mailman. Peace.